guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at this iCharger 308 Duo, which is having an issue known as 1305. You can see there, error 1305, connection check. Um, and if you'll notice up at the top there, we're not getting a voltage reading, which considering there's a battery connected, we probably should be. We're getting cell voltages, but not the main battery voltage. And that tells me what I need to know. I can go ahead and lift this display off. Uh, we're going to take a look over here on the left side of the board. And you'll notice we have a couple of fuses, three of them, in fact. If I take my handy dandy multimeter here, put it in continuity. Nothing. Whereas if we go to the other side, this channel works, you get something, <laughs> nothing, something. So yeah, these fuses are blown, happens pretty often. So yeah, these are 15 amp fuses. There are three of them on the 30 series chargers and four of them on the 40 series, 30 and 40 amps respectively. Um, and the fuses give you 45 and 60 amps, um, depending on which charger, which is about a 50% overhead, but pretty easy to actually go over that and blow the fuses. Uh, the customer on this one said I think they were at about 0.7 volts on the main output leads um, and they ended up shorting somehow, I don't know how, and that was enough to blow them. So it's pretty easy to do. Luckily it's also a fairly straightforward repair. You don't even need to take the heat sink off. Um, it's pretty easy to do and uh, let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of this uh, low mount solder. Which I used in the previous video that I did about repairing stuff. Because it helps considerably on uh, removing components. And that's what it's for. I'm going to add some flux as per usual. Because low melt solder often does not have any flux in it. Let's melt that a little bit. Add it on there. Start spreading it onto the fuses. Do the same on the other side. Being careful to avoid the little resistor down there. And you can already see they're moving around a little bit. You can do it with your soldering iron, but it makes it a little easier if you have a heat gun to actually pull them off because you can just tweeze them off one at a time. So I'm going to set this to uh, 300 degrees just real quick. One. Two. Hmm. So I just noticed this. The end cap of this just fell off when I pulled it off the board. Looks funny. Must have blown with some uh, significant force. Anyway, there they are. Removed. Now I'm going to take some uh, solder wick. Zoom in. That's better. And we're just going to yoink all this low melt solder back off of the board. Now you'll notice the gaps between the um, fuses has kind of closed. That's pretty common. Doesn't matter because they're in parallel anyways. I'm going to take a few of these replacements. Stuff them out 
there. And now we're going to put them back on after I clean the board. All right. To install these, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of solder in place. I'll add flux here in a second. That one on. And then we can do the other side. And then we're going to come back to this side. Make sure there's a nice bead of solder there. And they're good. It's kind of hard to make them look good when the solder mask in between each one comes off because then there's nothing stopping the solder from migrating between them but it'll still work so now i just need to clean the board again and uh, we'll be able to test it And we're getting main pack reading. We're getting cell readings. And we're charging. Remember guys, repair, don't replace. If you can fix it, fix it. Don't just buy a new one. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time.